Hi, I'm JD. Today we're going to talk about the difference quotient. The difference quotient was first formulated by Sir Isaac Newton. Yes, he was the same guy that was chilling, hanging out under a tree when all of a sudden an apple came down and hit his head. And then he wondered, why do all things rush towards Earth? Well, it's really because of gravity. And later on he helped develop the laws around gravitational pull. He also helped develop modern day calculus where we find the difference quotient that is used extensively for the definition of the derivative. It's also used to find the instantaneous rate of change. Rate of change is really slope. Slope, if we're going to talk about linear functions, really quite easy. Let's say we want to graph 2x plus 3. It's going to look something like this. That's 2x plus 3. I'll make it a bit longer. Uh, with a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of 2x. Slope is always defined as rise over run, where this is your rise divided by how far you run. Now with linear functions, the slope is consistent throughout the line all the way from negative infinity to positive infinity. But what if we have higher degree functions like f of x of x squared or x cubed? Well, x squared will give us a parabola. The slope changes depending on where you are in the domain. If you want to find the specific slope at a specific instant inside a function, then we use the difference quotient. Today we're going to find uh, the difference quotient of 1 over x. And if we graph 1 over x, and I'll do this one in green, it's going to look something like this. That's half of it. The other half will look something like that. And we have two lines, because that depends if you're inputting a, a positive or you're inputting a negative. We'll give you different uh, y functions, y values. Um, now let's find out the rate of change. Uh, I recommend first finding out what is x of f of x plus h. In this case, f of x plus h, we know that it will be 1 over x plus h. We substitute that in. Now that we know that what f of x plus h, h is, we just plug out everything back in. We'll do it right under, under here. 1 over, uh, right here, kind of space on this board. <laughs> 1 over x plus h minus f of x, which we know is 1 over x. 1 over x. All of this divided by h. Essentially, this is it. We're done. But in math, we always like to simplify. All right. So we have a complex fraction here. Let's figure out the top first by doing the LCD, defining the least common denominator of both, which is x times x plus h. We do um, um, then we cross multiply one times x plus h and x times and one times uh, x. And then eventually we will get, so that equals x minus x minus h divided by the LCD, which uh, we said it was x times x plus h. All that divided by our original h. It's still a complex fraction. x minus x is just uh, 1. So it's really negative h divided by this over h. When you divide by a fraction, remember, you got to multiply by its reciprocal all day, every day. All right? Well, let's take care of these x's. And once you do, you will get this negative h divided by the same LCD that we found earlier, x plus h, all of that divided by h. So we have this fraction essentially multiplied by h, by the reciprocal of h, which is 1 over h. Let's do that over here. And once you do that, I'm going to baby step this. So we have negative h. x plus h. Multiply that with 1 divided by h. Remember, 1 over h is the reciprocal of h. We multiply those two and we get negative 1 divided by x times x plus h. And there you have it. Our answer. Negative 1 
um, uh, which essentially we take the negative out and it's just one over x of uh, x plus h. Since we want to find the limit of when h or the horizontal distance approaches zero, you put in zero for h. Essentially, you will get one over negative one over x squared. And that's how you can find the slope at any given point of our function. That is all for today. Thank you. See you soon.